Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving southern and mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors and thank you so much for joining us this week. We sure do appreciate it. Now if you live in southern Michigan or kind of the mid-Michigan area, you know there has not been very good ice conditions this year. That is starting to change in this part of the state and what we're going to do is spend a little bit of time in West Michigan on this week's show doing some perch fishing on White Lake. You won't want to miss that. And then our own Jordan Brown is going to take us out for a really good day of chasing beagles and has a really good bunny hunt that you won't want to miss. And speaking of rabbits, we're also going to have a rabbit recipe with our cook and friend Jim Wood at Antlers Fireside Grill. Lots good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes. Here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. Wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at rbmjigs.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. Today I would be tagging along with a few guys on an afternoon rabbit hunt. The plan was to hunt a small section of timber where the guys have had lots of luck before. It didn't take long before the first shot was fired, and shortly thereafter we had our first rabbit okay. on the ground. Well, the dogs jumped him over here in one of the piles and looped him all the way around right back to me. Come trotting on in and first one. So we are out rabbit hunting, my brother and uh, dad and I were we're just north of Puamo. Um, Dale's been rabbit hunting for, for years. He goes out just about every day. What would you say, 30 days a, a month? 29 times last month. <laughs> 29 times in the last month. So he shows us all the good spots and we've had a lot of fun throughout the years. This property here is great. Got a lot of vines, down trees. They hinge cut a lot of in here and just holds a lot of rabbits hopefully get more in the east end of the woods. Well, I got three beagles, a nine-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a 10-month-old puppy. I run them, try to run them every day, at least for an hour if I can. It's the only way to get good dogs is to run them a lot. Dogs are working up for about five minutes before they came around. Man right in front of us. Kind of snuck in on us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Snuck up on us. I started probably when I was 20 years old. I've been at almost 40 years. You start kind of thing to do, but I never wanted to have beagles. We only hunt Sunday mornings two hours, so I try to hunt them at least six days a week, for at least for an hour a day if I can. There's some days I'll go hunting in the morning for a couple hours and go hunting in the afternoon for a couple hours. 
and I want never want to be the guy to have beagles and not hunt them enough. So make good dog, make good dogs. You gotta run them a lot so they learn. And the only way you can learn is to hunt them. Filming rabbit hunts can be difficult, especially when there's multiple shooters and lots of rabbits. Thankfully, Spencer was wearing a GoPro and capturing some of what I was missing. Good job, girls. Good job. Right here. Right here. Yes, good job. Good job, girl. You know, we've been coming out here ever since we were young boys. It just, we get out of school and the first thing we do is, is go rabbit hunting. And uh, what I like about it is with dogs, you're always trying to figure out, okay, well, how can I position myself to be in the best spot so the rabbit, the dogs will always circle the rabbit back to where it originally came from. So finding those pinch points and finding those brush lines and fence rows, it's just, you know, it's I, I'm a deer hunter as well, and I love sitting in a tree and, and waiting for that big buck, but being on my feet and walking around and watching the dogs go to work, it's just a lot of fun. There's always action, but you always want to, if you, even if you don't have dogs, you can just walk around, kick brush piles, and uh, walk through the brush, and you're going to kick up rabbits. Come on, bring him here, bring him here. There you go. Thank you. Come here, Abby. Abby, Abby. Come here. Good job, girl. Good job, good job. Come here, Dana. Good job. Molly, right here it is. Molly. Yeah, good job, girl. Right here, Molly. That's what we're after. When you're hunting with dogs, oftentimes it's more about the chase and less about the number of rabbits that end up girls. in the truck. And that means occasionally letting a rabbit go if the dogs are in good position to run it. Thankfully, there were plenty of rabbits around and lots of shot opportunities to be had. Nice healthy rabbit right there. Make, it, make a great meal for somebody. I think we got another one going. Oof. Oh, I know. We had two of them there in a two seconds apart. This end over here is a hot spot. Full of treetops and briars. I think we can get some more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Alright, here's one coming at you. Come at you, Spencer. Ready pile. Abby, come. There it goes. Right at you. I don't think so. I was, <laughs> I was like right through <laughs> a lot of brush. I might have got him. Number four. Well, it started out a little slow. We were on the other side of the woods. It was a little wet, a lot of ice, but we made it over to the, the uh, east side. And man, we can't keep up with them. <laughs> Dogs are running every which direction. Rabbits are running in between us. So trying to find that shot opportunity, you got to be quick. <laughs> a lot of fun though. This is a perfect day. It's warm out. The snow melts down a little bit. Rabbits can run on it. Dogs can run on it. Dogs can track very well on this. 
they did very good this afternoon. Bringing rabbits back around in the circle and around for us. Bringing rabbits out of the brush piles for us. I think we shot nine. Seen a lot more. Weather's with us. It's been a very good day. You can ask for a better day in Michigan than an afternoon rabbit hunt. Whether you're stomping brush piles or hunting over a dog, rabbit hunting can be a great way to spend an afternoon in the woods. And with season coming to a close in just over a month, you might want to make it a priority to get out at least one more time. Special thanks to Dale and the guys for letting me tag along on a very successful hunt here in southern Michigan. Well, like I said at the beginning of the show, the ice conditions here in southern Michigan, mid-Michigan, really have been pretty iffy at best. That is starting to change, so make sure you do call ahead and find out the conditions on the lake you want to check out. We're going to spend some time over on White Lake with Mitch Johnson, who's going to show us how to catch perch in a little bit deeper water. Today I was heading out with Mitch Johnson, owner of Johnson's Great Outdoors in Montague here in Muskegon County. It is hard to get an outdoor shop owner to actually get outdoors sometimes, but Mitch was itching to get out and join his buddies already on the lake. That's the way you do it. <laughs> there you go. Right on cue. Yeah. You get one? Yeah. Yeah, you cook yourself. <laughs> Nice fish. Oh, Perfect. You just walk out here and catch him, just like this guy. <laughs> well, I'm thinking it's about 40, 48 feet. Oh, okay. And uh, you just got to work them until you get them going. The perch fishing along the west side of the state has been picking up over the last few years, and Mitch said that that has carried right over to ice fishing as well as the soft water. It's been really good, you know, especially since the um, perch fishing has been good all fall long. Um, you know, once the guys could start getting out here, it was really good. You know, always typically the first part of the season, you know, starting out at Wesley's for bluegills. That's first ice, everybody's kind of on that. They're excited to get out there, so that starts always really good. And then when the perch fishing starts and the guys can get out there, it's usually really good. Like this last weekend, there was a ton of guys here fishing. We are going to use a Northland buckshot spoon with just a, we're going to put a single hook on here, a rat finky. I like the buckshot. It's got a little rattle in it, plus it's got a little bit of glow to it. So what's nice about that is you can thump the bottom with it. It stirs the bottom all up. Then you can kind of finesse the fish. The fish have been a little bit on the touchy side right now, so you can finesse them up to it. And we'll, I'll show you what the rat finky looks on there in a second here. The rat finky Mitch was using is a pretty simple setup. He also ties it about two inches away from the weight so that it has a little bit better action. I like, I'm a white spike guy. To be honest with you, if I have one bait to take perch fish with me, it is a spike. When I hook these spikes, I hook them once through the head. And I kind of, um, kind of squish them a little bit to have their innards come out of them a little bit. Just kind of push them right together. Leaves a good smell down there to them. All right. Well, let's see what we can do. See how they come up? There he is.
Hey. We got our first perch of the morning. There you go. A pretty decent one. So. Nice fish. Yes, it is. They're, you know, they're, they're not monsters, but I'll tell you what, they're good quality fish, and I, that's, that's what I like for eating size fish too, so. Well, we're not gonna get skunked. Nope, we are not <laughs> gonna get skunked. Guys were coming and going pretty much all morning and early afternoon. I asked Mitch a little bit more about the setup he was using today. I like this Marmish bobber a lot. I've been using this bobber for, oh my gosh, for probably, this one there, probably 20 years I've used that bobber. Actually, my dad started using that bobber and I build a ton of custom ice rods and I pretty much put that bobber on there. It, it is, a, you know, it's sensitive, especially for like bluegill fishing. You know, it won't be that far over like that when you're bluegill fishing with it. You know, I got quite a bit of weight on it right here, but the key is the sensitivity and also another thing when you're perch fishing right there you want to you want to make sure that you use fire line because fire line in deep water it, it's sensitive and when the fish bite it there's no stretch there to it so so are you watching the bobber or are you waiting for the feel yep. or a little bit of yeah, both? yeah i'm, I'm kind of doing a little bit of both right there but they're they're finicky i they, they'll they'll hit at it and you know then they'll get a little better one yep hey oh well, that's what we're looking for. That's a dandy right yeah. there. That's a nice fish. We figure he is. 10? 12? Yeah, I'd say he's probably 10, 10 and a half. Okay. That's going to be my guess. But we'd, we'd take a few of them. Mm, finding them, just not a lot of big ones. All right. Yeah. I have faith that we'll get some. <laughs> better one? Yeah, it feels like a little better one. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Decent fish. Mm -hmm. Monster, but he's a you know, decent fish. Down there, they're just biting really light. Hmm. Another small one. Yep. The big ones seem to be few and far between right now. Keeper? Yeah. A little better fish. Nice quality fish. Mm -hmm. getting, getting, getting a getting couple there. more, a little bit more here. Sticking be, at it. Be patient, you know. Maybe we'll turn on here, so there's a lot of fish on the graph. And you know these fish bite all day? You know what? Usually some of the best bite is from like 10 to 2, I find, on perch fishing. Um, and then, you know, then they'll have a little low and then maybe a little bit before dark, but most of the best bites I see come from like 10 to 2. Hmm. So, those are my kind of hours. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> you don't need to get out there early. The only time you really need to get out there early is if they get to get a parking spot. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they will start turning on. We kind of said that he's, a lot of his, what, like 8 to 10 inches is what yep. you're typically getting out here? Yep. Okay. And that's, you know, for me, that's. That's my favorite size fish. I like that eight to ten inch perch. You know, they make a good meal. A lot of them guys like them fish that are 11, 12 inch. I like them eight to ten inch perch. They are really. They're, I think they're some of the best eaters. Wow! Look at that. The cameraman even caught one. Yes, he did. That's a nice fish. Wow. Getting a little water in the shack here. Yes, we are. <laughs> Isn't that a nice fish? We fished for about four hours or so but had enough for a nice perch dinner that night. Lots of good fishing to be had right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, hey, everybody. We are here once again with Jim Wood at Antlers Fireside Grill. We're here in Canadian Lakes. And, Jim, it is that time of year. Actually, we've taped a couple rabbit hunts, and we're going to do a rabbit recipe. How are we going to do this today? So this is uh, braised rabbit ragu. We served okay. over fettuccine. So this is a very simplistic dish. Um, 
This is kind of my interpretation on a very popular uh, Italian dish because the rabbit is big in Italy. Huh. Okay, and now our rabbits, I mean, I've done a little bit. We've done a few recipes over the years. Pretty easy to work with, not so much. What do you think? Well, you gotta cook them slow. Okay. So basically, you know, they're really good for braises, um, sausages, things of that nature. Okay, well, how do we get started here? Oh, we're just gonna get our pan going. You guys ever do a rabbit dish here at the? Yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah, we've done a lot of different rabbit dishes. So we're just gonna put a little salt on it. And we're just looking to give it a good brown sear. Once both sides of the rabbit are brown, remove it from the heat, and in the same pan, add in your onion, carrots, celery, and bacon. Once the vegetables and bacon have cooked down, add in a little brown sugar, garlic, and some white wine. All right, how do we finish this sauce off? Or so we've reduced the wine. Okay, put those back in. And add our rabbit legs back in. This is rabbit stock that I actually made last night. Roasted nice. rabbit stock. You don't have to use rabbit stock, you can use chicken stock, but if you have the time to make roasted rabbit stock, it's worth it. It's eh? worth it. Hmm. Good to know. And then we've got some rosemary, some thyme, and a bay leaf. Hmm. And then we're gonna add some tomatoes here. And not all canned tomatoes are created equal, that's for sure. So okay. At, when this dish is done, you're clearly going to want to taste this first because you might have to add a bit of sugar hmm. depending on the type of tomato you've used. So that's just tomato paste? No, these are just crushed tomatoes, crushed canned tomatoes, crushed tomatoes. Okay. So and then will you put a top on this and put it in the oven or let it... So I'm going to put this in a different pan and cover it with tin foil and cover it with braise tinfoil. it in the oven. Um, so and, like 350 for... Yep, 350 degrees. I mean... It, it all depends on what you're cooking. I mean, you can do this with squirrel. You mm. can do this with pheasant. Squirrel or pheasant, I'd say, you know, hour, hour and a half. Oh. A rabbit, right around two hours. Okay, Jim, so we just took this out of the oven, and what else, what did you do to it? So we pulled all the, the herbs out. Okay. Um, and then we took the rabbit right off the bone, and just kind of shredded it. Okay. All right, then you're gonna add, I mean, depending on how many portions you want. You know, I'm gonna do one big portion right now, basically. And while that's warming up, we actually take an orange hmm. and we'll throw a little orange zest in there. Okay. And that rabbit's nice and tender then. Uh, oh yeah, it's fall apart, yep. Hmm. And you can smell the orange zest now. It kind of just makes the whole dish kind of pop. And we're gonna add the pasta right to the pan there. And any kind of pasta you want, pretty much? Yeah. and and. Honestly, you don't have to use pasta. You could serve this over like cheese grits or hmm. polenta. I mean, even really mashed potatoes if you wanted. Okay. And what's the name of this dish? This is braised rabbit ragu. Well, hey, everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. And as always, if you'd like to see something again, you can check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there. And we're on most of the social media platforms if you want to kind of take a peek at us there as well. Now, if you're looking for something fun to do next week, it's just a week or so away on the 27th of February. If you're going to be in southeast Michigan, we're going to be taping Big Buck Night East down there at Outdoorama in Novi. That is always a lot of fun. And if you've never been to one of those events, it's really impressive to see those deer in person. But we're going to be doing that again on Thursday next week on the 27th down in Novi at Outdoorama. Should be a lot of fun. Stop in and say hello. And if we don't see you there or in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Jay's Sporting Goods, with locations in both Claire and Gaylord, Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the traditions of Jay's, on the web at jaysportinggoods.com. 
Michigan's hunters and anglers are essential partners to the health of the state's wildlife and habitats. The Michigan Wildlife Council is dedicated to ensuring our hunting and fishing heritage and Michigan's natural resources are preserved for future generations. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama February 27th through March 1st at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, the trout pond, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi February 27th through March 1st. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hand. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land, I I should die.